What's up, Michaelphiles? It is Karina Bina, and today I will be going live with Mimi the Mushroom Queen. And Mimi is the host of the Medicine Podcast, and she is an amazing woman who I'm so inspired by and she is sharing her vulnerable story and supporting other women and men who are going through healing their mind, their bodies, and their relationships. So yeah, I'm going to bring Mimi in on here. With Mimi. Hello. Oh, love. I'm so happy you're here. Super stoked. It's going to be great. Yes. And first, just want to say thank you for your vulnerability, your openness to share about these topics online and your story um, with other women and their journeys. And yeah, it's really beautiful to see how many women are being supported by you just sharing online. And that's something I'm, uh, yeah, I care about so much and how I like to use my platform as well. So I'm excited to bring in that women and feminine power here to Fungi Academy and yeah, to support the women of our community as well as the men in being vulnerable and sharing. I love it. Yeah. I was just telling someone yesterday, can you hear me? Okay. Are my AirPods doing okay? Perfect. Okay, cool. I was just telling someone yesterday or a couple days ago that I would rather have the potential for really deep impact with a small amount of people. You know, I have a a fairly small following, you know, 7,000 something followers, but I would rather have the, the potential for really deep, lasting, potentially life changing impact than, you know, 1 million followers with the potential for very superficial interaction or, you know, like take it or leave it kind of information. Like, I don't want that. <laughs> so um, I, I just, I, I see you, I see you guys. And I'm so happy to be uh, on here with you and talking about all this stuff because it's so important and it's not talked about enough. So thank you for having me on and uh, I'm excited. Ah, me too. And I'm just so ready to dive right in and just, introduce the community to who you are and what you do and how medicinal mushrooms have impacted your life. Um, Yeah. So if you want to open up and share. Yeah. Oh my gosh. How have mushrooms not impacted my life at this point? Um, So let's see. I am a dental hygienist by degree. So I went to school and got my dental health science degree back in 2013. And I practiced dental hygiene clinically for seven years. Um, And then Actually, it was in my dental office that I first heard about this mushroom um, called AHCC. And it was in the context of one of our, um, one of our patients in the office uh, had HPV. She was an older woman, like 55-ish, and she was you know, recently single and getting back into dating. And, and her naturopath recommended this mushroom for her. And... And it helped clear her HPV. It worked. And so when she told, she told actually the other hygienist, but I heard through the other hygienist, I was like, whoa. I was like, wait, what? Because at this point, I had like kind of messed around with, um, you know, mushroom coffees and the little packets and thought I knew something about mushrooms because I had used certain, you know, very famous brands that you just dump in and pour hot water over. And, and so I thought I knew And when I heard like, whoa, this can help with HPV, I didn't know that there was anything that could really help with this. And so I was just like immediately on Dr. Google and I was looking for what is this thing called AHCC? And so immediately I found um, a bunch of anecdotal evidence, you know, via like um, reviews on Amazon and things like that. And then I dug a little deeper and I discovered that there was a whole research association um, behind AHCC. And so then I was like, immediately like this stuff is legit and I need to know more about it. So I immediately ordered some for myself. And then I just started diving into all things research around AHCC. And, uh, and I haven't stopped since. So that was in 2016 ish. And so I've, I've, um, 
it, I feel like medicinal mushrooms, but especially AHCC, and we'll definitely get into more about what is that even, because there's probably people on here who are major mushroom lovers and haven't heard of this. She's like, she's full of shit. What is she talking about? What is this AHCC? Um, but I feel like it's woven into my being at this point, and I can't not share about it. Um, and uh, do you want me to go into like what exactly it is before I go any deeper into my story? Yeah, because even for me, I'm like, okay, what is? <laughs> <laughs> but... Yeah, so AHCC is not a mushroom in and of itself. It is a derivative. It comes from the mycelia, the, the roots. If anyone here is new to the structure of a mushroom, the mycelia um, are considered to be the root-like structure of a mushroom. It's the part that we you know, don't really see. Um, and so AHCC stands for active hexose correlated compound and it comes from the mycelia of shiitake mushrooms so it's a cultured mycelial product oh yeah she's got an hcc is yeah. shiitake mycelium yeah she knows or he let's see action it could go either way but um yes it's, it's very powerful and it's very unique because of the way that it's cultured um and the uh it, it comes from one source in japan and um, it's in uh, Sapporo, Japan. I've had the um, immense pleasure to go and visit Japan and see the source of where all HCC in the world comes from. This was like a red carpet event for me. I was just in heaven. Um, and so HCC is really unique in that way. So I, I call it a, a mushroom product, but it's really more than that. Um, if I say, oh, it's a cultured mycelial product, probably 0% of people will <laughs> know what I'm talking about. So I call it a mushroom product, um, but it's really it's really unique. It's it's more than than that. Um, so so yeah, that's that's exactly what it is. And I have um, uh, since then I have developed my own HCC private label. So my private label is called Immune Intel HCC. And so if someone were to go on, someone were to go on my page, that's what they would see me talking about is that Immune Intel HCC. Hmm, beautiful. And I know that you share a lot about your healing with medicinal mushrooms and your relationship as well. And I would love to get like a little bit of background on what you mean by that. Because like, oh, you take a mushroom and your relationship is healed or your body's healed. And um, yeah, I feel like there's a lot more to that. And I would love for the community to hear a little bit about your background in, in that space as well. Yeah, well, okay, so the, like you mentioned in my intro, um, the medicine podcast, which I'm the, a co-host of, um, our little mantra is disease prevention for body, mind, and relationships. And the relationship part of that comes from largely my background with my partner, Chase. Um, we were high school sweethearts, childhood sweethearts, literally got together when we were children at like 16. And we were together for 10 years. And th three of those years, we were actually married. Um, then we got to a point where we were both very out of balance, very unhappy, and really no tools to communicate. And we essentially parted ways, we separated and legally divorced. This was also in 2016. Um, and so, <laughs> um, the relationship part of what we share on our podcast is us coming out of that, I want to say hellhole that we were both in. We were both at rock bottom, spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally, relationally, all the allies we've been, that was our rock bottom. And then three years later, through many spiritual epiphanies and kind of this Grand Canyon of self-development, as I call it. Three years later, we were both in new spaces, new careers. We're, we're like completely different expressions of our souls. And we met up organically. And it was like, who are you? Like, I know you better than anyone in the world, but also who are you? Mm. And I was so intrigued with this person that was in front of me and vice versa. And so that was two years ago, uh, we, we were meeting up organically and, um, and we've been together ever since. And mushrooms didn't directly 
heal our relationship. But I say that they were in the background because I think some people on this um, live will, will recognize, will, will understand when I say, when you don't feel good, when your hair's falling out, when you have explosive acne, when you have a rash, I'm talking about my experiences here. I had a rash on half of my body that was totally unexplained. I had no energy, no fatigue. I was exercising myself to death, basically. When you just don't feel good, you can't do, there's almost no space to work on anything else in your life. And that's, that's how I, that's how we both were. And so although we were doing other things, it wasn't just mushrooms, but mushrooms were always there as a part of our healing journey. Um, whether we were switching from, you know, gross purple pre-workout to cordyceps, right? Cause we needed that or we were having more of a balancing, like I need more mood stabilizing, more balancing, more hormone-based hormone um, balancing with reishi, that was there too. I of course was in, you know, in the middle of my AHCC deep dive and research and developing products. So that was a sort of like mentor that I was looking at. And same for Chase, I won't, I won't tell his personal story, but we wouldn't be together right now if it weren't for some um, spiritual epiphanies where, you know, um, I would say mushrooms were, were heavily involved and they were, um, it really like was the catalyst for us to come back together and to create from here, from this space of, we call it part one and part two. We are in our second year of part two now, I guess going into our third year technically. Um, and now what we create together is from a place of co-creation rather than what it was before as codependence. That's a lot. That was a lot. There's a lot to our story. Um, we, we talk about it all the time on our podcast, of course, but that's kind of a, a, a short synopsis of um, our love story and, um, and um, uh, how mushrooms were involved. Um, if that, if that answers your question. Uh, um, the reason why I like, ask and and kind of wanted to go deep on this is because like I am in a very similar place with that and me and my partner have been together for three years and actually he is another director of Fungi Academy he's the creative director and so we work together we live together we play together like our life is together but one thing I notice like every six months we go through this cycle where we really have to check ourselves and not like more so each other as a partnership, but ourselves, our individual health, like what is our habitual patterns? What is our morning routine? And right now we're kind of in that, that cycle again, where we're coming to the end of a cycle where we do need um, this like uh, uh, check in with ourselves. And it's like, Hey, yeah. what are we doing in the mornings? Like, well, how are we starting our days? And, and something I find super powerful um, and, and was inspired by your talk with Jasper is like hearing what your guys' morning routines were and, and including the medicinal mushrooms. And there's something about the mushrooms being this like catalyst for like starting your day off right. And mm -hmm. I, I've been like a, a health blogger for 16, not, since I was 16 years old um, when Instagram wow. out was like over 10 years ago. And yeah, it's a really funny story. Um, I had this like tea tanned and toned Instagram page and I was like all about, you know, starting your day off right and really deeply part of my practice until like the past, yeah, a couple of years I've noticed myself like coming in and out of this practice. And also when I do fall out of it, um, I notice uh, the effects on my relationships and mm -hmm. it's something you know, like mushrooms aren't going to save your relationship, but what they do as a catalyst to, you know, start your your morning off in a better way, or, or maybe they also, you start taking mushrooms and you start like realizing the um, the power your body has and you start incorporating other healthy aspects into your life. Um, you start noticing as well, like, um, yeah, the relationships that you have, whether it's a partnership or friendships, they start improving. And yeah, I'm feeling that so much and I'm in such alignment with your story. And it like hearing your guys' story was also a beautiful reminder for me and my partner that also our morning routines don't have to be the same, that we can discover what works best for ourselves on our mm -hmm. own 
to come back together with this like co-creation um energy like this powerful energy together to grow together versus like oh we're kind of growing kind of falling and going through this thing but we're on our individual paths growing cohesively mm -hmm. and yeah I just I resonate so much with that and I I really appreciated your guys' story and I loved it and it's impacted me and we actually had this conversation this morning and he even said to me, like, you know what I found even the most powerful part is that they did it on their own and then came back together mm -hmm. and wrong. And that's something I need a reminder that I'm like, well, no, we have to do our yoga practice right next to each other every morning. We got to do this. Like, if I'm going to have this mushroom, you will have it too. And it's like, <laughs> own, um, yeah, our own pass. And then, like, <clears throat> so. Yeah, no, I totally resonate with all of that. And I, I think that, um, um, when mushrooms can be whatever type that you're talking about, they can be, um, a really powerful sort of tool and specifically with medicinal mushrooms, I think it is aside from the actual direct benefits of reishi or lion's mane or cordyceps or whatever we're talking about, there is also feedback that you're giving your body, that you're choosing something, you're choosing this uh, powerful adaptogenic mushroom and you are choosing to take ownership of your health, right? It's a little signal to your spirit, to your soul, to you on the inside that like, I'm doing this um, because I know that it's going to return. It's going to return. I'm, I'm putting a penny away every single day and you can do that in your relationship. But I think when you do something like adding mushrooms to your, your morning ritual or your morning routine, you're reinforcing that like, I have the power, I take ownership of my health, and I can heal. If you're on a healing journey, I can heal. And it's up to me. No one else is going to do it for me. No corporation, no business, no company is going to do it. No partner is going to do it for me. I do it for me. I heal me. And you're, it's almost like, you, you know what I mean? Like that reinforcement that you're, you're choosing ownership. And then that snowballs into other areas of your life, right? Like even into your relationship where the mushrooms aren't necessarily, you know, directly affecting your relationship, maybe certain types of mushrooms, but medicinal mushrooms say, but because you've already given yourself that feedback day in and day out that I can do this, I heal, I do hard things, I'm taking ownership then it allows you to take ownership maybe in your career or your relationship or with other, you know, family dynamics or other relationships, friendships. It's all coming back to you in ways that sometimes I think people don't, uh, don't maybe realize right away that that's what they're doing. But I see it now that once you see it, then you can't not see it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Super beautiful. Um, and then, yeah, I just, Coming back to that ownership um, and also the AHCC and um, yeah, owning the healing in your body, your womb as well as a woman. And um, yeah, mm -hmm. I'd love to, you know, go back into that space of talking about AHCC and the healing powers that, um, you know, you have heard uh, with stories of other women um, going through that. So I would love for you to, if you can touch on that as well. Yeah, so it, this all started for me, you know, there's a ton of research around HCC. The, re the clinical research started in the late 80s, and it is the most clinically researched functional food in the world. Everything from Lyme to HPV to cancer to liver disease to autoimmune to epilepsy, there's all these, this clinical research surrounding this thing that is AHCC. And when I went to Japan in um, 2019, the summer of 2019, I came back, you know, it was a, it was a, it was a week long, basically, of hearing the clinical research, the newest clinical research that was out there. And what really stuck with me was the, the newest research around HPV and HCC, I know I see that comment, and I love that, um, was, the, was the really powerful research. And one of the clinical studies that was being presented was um, around HPV. And I just couldn't get this out of my head. This isn't something that I've directly 
um, dealt with myself that I know of. I could have by now. You, sometimes you have no idea. Um, but directly, I haven't um, dealt with it. But I've at this point talked to thousands of women who are really dealing with this on their own. And when I came back from Japan, I couldn't not share about this. And once I did start sharing about it, you know, it started as like an Instagram post. And then there would be a person that would DM me or comment or whatever. And I would get this flood of women who were like, oh my gosh, I felt like you wrote that for me. I'm going through this right now and I have no one to talk to. I don't know if I should date or how to talk to my partner about it. I don't know, should I like, should I have this procedure that they're, that the, my OB is telling me to do? She didn't give me any other, you know, information, no education. And really this overwhelming sense that these, these women, because we're the ones that, you know, get checked out, we get the pap smears, men don't get pap smears. Um, we're the ones that carry this diagnosis, right? This label of HPV. And more often than not, women are telling me, I don't know what to do. I feel dirty. I feel shame around this in some way. I feel like I did something wrong. Um, and I feel alone. And I just like, there's a, there's been a couple of times where I just have completely broke down emotionally where I have to take a couple days away from my phone because of the heaviness of the stories that come my way from women who are desperate. They have zero answers, zero help from their practitioner, and they don't know what to do. All they're told is, Hey, just come back in a year and we'll recheck you. A year's a long time for a woman to lay awake at night, not know if she should date, all of those things that I mentioned. And so really um, my work with educating women and, and um, providing resources is first and foremost, I want to provide a space, a safe space that any woman um, can come to and DM me and say like, hey, this is what's going on. What do I do? That's how it started. And then there were so many that came from that. I was like, I was working with women one on one, kind of in a coaching, like, hey, let's look at this. Let's look at, let's get some HCC in you. Let's look at your nutrition. Um, I'm also a culinary nutrition expert. So I was able to, like, hey, let's look at, let's get these oils out. Let's stop going through the fast food drive through, like all these, you know, things that you can do in your nutrition and your, your food, um, because that's medicine as well. And then also a mindset practice, like, what are we doing? What are you doing on a daily basis to reconnect to your body that's working so hard for you? And that's what I was seeing over and over and over is some level of disconnect that women were having with their bodies, feeling betrayed or dirty or whatever, you know, fill in the adjective, right? They're feeling negative about this. And their body is feeling that. Their body is feeling that negative energy, right? And so part of my work is also how do we reconnect to our body where your body feels safe to heal? So there was all this information and I, I, I wasn't able to continue a one-on-one -on -one because there was just too many women at this point. And so I was like, okay, I got to create a course. I have to create something that is evergreen that any woman can go to and learn the best that I have to offer at any time. So that's how I created the course that I did. Um, it's called clear and we talk about those three pillars of HCC education, nutrition, which is medicine, <laughs> and then also mindset practice for healing. Um, and so that's really, and I still help people, you know, in my DMs and things like that, but that's, that's my best resource for women. Um, and it's, it's all just, um, it, it's just been a snowball of like listening to women and like, okay, what can I create? Mm -hmm. That's beautiful that you um, you focus a lot on the holistic practice because whether it is HPV um, or you know like something that I uh, came out with on my personal Instagram was that I was struggling with BV, which is bacteria, mm -hmm. which I did not realize a lot of women actually were struggling with that. But once I, I once I did a, a live and started talking about it and the holistic practices that I was going through um, with my healing, um, so many women came to me and were open about sharing their journey and their struggle with it and how they just went what the doctors told them to do, take antibiotics and um, to an extent antibiotics can help and support, but um, it's uh, about the long-term journey and it, 
if you get it once you are susceptible to getting it again and how do we focus on like the long-term healing and for me yeah. about the holistic practice specifically mindset nutrition and then whatever element of medicine you would like to incorporate into your practice as well and yeah i think it's really powerful and beautiful and something that a lot of times we forget about it it's a holistic journey and a big right is the mindset and if we don't feel like we have a space to communicate with people on it about these taboo um things that happen in majority of uh, women's bodies uh 80 percent uh, get hpv and so many women i i can't even like explain when i <laughs> went publicly on bv like so many women get these infections or utis and we just don't talk about it because there's right. like, a taboo to talk about our room and especially on alive like this or on our platforms where we have you know you say seven thousand is a small group but, but i think that's huge like that's a, a <laughs> lot of and it's amazing how many people are on similar paths as us as us and and need the support and need the community to communicate with because before i started using social media as a, an outlet to share my journey i didn't really talk to any friends i was afraid and um on my on my platform as well i, I like to talk about sex quality and intimacy and relationships and and these things that we don't really um i didn't really communicate about with my friends until i started using my platform and realized how many other people are going through the same thing as me and who yeah. the community to support each other with and yeah I, I think it's so so important to focus on that mindset because when you feel supported and held and you don't feel alone um you start working on the mind just in that area of just like okay i'm not alone like there's other other girls yeah. here and and that is it's so powerful and yeah so beautiful what you're doing i'm so happy that there's a space for women to to go to um yeah and share our stories yeah i i i say this to a lot of women that slide into my dms but i i say like you are not alone. I get these messages every single day, all day. And I wish that y'all could just see each other's messages because they're so, they are diverse because everyone has a different story, but there's, they're all very, very similar. And um, I, I, I love being able to provide that safe place for women because honestly, there's a, there's a lot of the weight and the stress is um, I think you know, HPV, human papillomavirus, is a slow-acting virus, which is ultimately a good thing, right? It acts very slow. But the, dan the, very, the most dangerous part about it is that there is still this kind of weird hush-hush thing about it, even though it is so common. I say that it's so common, it's like getting a cervical cold, right, or a cervical flu, where it's like you don't shame somebody for getting the flu or getting a cold, Right. And that's the same mentality that needs to be applied to HPV because it is so common. And by, you know, this negative connotation with it in society, just kind of being hush hush, not talked about. That's where the real danger is when the woman feels alone. And when we feel alone, we don't we don't necessarily always reach out even to our best friends if we don't know how common it is. And um, so that's what I'm really, you know, passionate about is dissolving this negative connotation with it. And um, at this point, if it's something that I deal with at some point in my life, I am not going to be shy about it because I want other women who follow me who are dealing with it as well to be able to talk about it and to ask questions when they need to and to reach out um, and um, share, you know, hey, I healed from this, like I cleared it with HCC, or I cleared it with Reishi or whatever, um, then we need to know that that's how good information spreads. It's, it's unfortunately not going to be spreading through medical textbooks and medical institutions. It's, it's going to be spread through what we're doing right now. And then all these women who are who are listening can then, oh my gosh, I just my cousin just mentioned I got to get her on this, it, that this good information spreads like wildfire when women are talking like this. I want to share, um, someone just asked if we can explain what HPV is. So if you want to just yes. go over that for women and men who are watching. And yeah. 
Yes, so HPV stands for human papilloma virus, and there's over a hundred different strains. This can lead to things like warts on your elbows, warts on your fingers, on your feet. Um, some people will get them, get oral manifestations. You know, being a dental hygienist, we would see that sometimes. Um, but sometimes it does show up <clears throat> as genital warts or it can show up as cervical dysplasia. So you don't get warts necessarily, but you, there is a breakdown. There's abnormal cells that happen on a woman's cervix. And those those strains are usually correlated to, um, they call them high risk, where you may not get warts, um, but it's, it's more high risk in that if left untreated or left alone, it could lead to something like cervical cancer. Um, just to put it into perspective with some numbers here, there's over 14 million cases of new cases of HPV in the US every single year. That's just the US, 14 million cases. So that's what I mean when I say it's like catching a cervical cold. That's how common it is. Over 80% of sexually active people will come into contact with this virus. If your immune system is on point and your, your body is able to navigate in a way, your body could deal with this virus and let it go, clear it, and you may never know. You never know. You, you, probably most of us listening or on this live have dealt with it if we are sexually active to some degree, and, and maybe you just don't know. And that's where it gets really hard because this is not just a woman's thing. Um, men can spread it. They do spread it unknowingly because unless they have something like genital warts, unless they have a strain that causes genital warts, then, um, then they might not know that they have it. And it can also stay dormant for years and pop up, um, you know, say you have a super stressful week at work and your immune system is already shot and you come into contact with a super high dose of heavy metals or mold or lime and your body is just dealing with a lot, that's when you might see it surface um, where, you know, some women will be like, I haven't had a partner in years and how is it just popping up? It's because it's and then it shows up clinically like on a pap smear. So I hope that all makes sense. And maybe if, if I'm leaving anything out, um, people can, can continue to ask questions if I need to clarify. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the basics of HPV. And I, I will also just say, part of my course also is talking about the safety of the... Can you still hear me? Yeah, I can, I can hear you now. You just cut out for a second. Okay, I think my AirPods are... Done. Yeah. I'm going to take them out. <laughs> okay. Is it still good? Yeah, it sounds great. Okay. So, what was I saying? Oh, talking about the HPV shot. Because a lot of women mm. will come to me and be like, WTF, I got the shot when, when I was 11 years old or 15 years old or 17 years old, and I still got HPV. What's going on? And I think that this is where the education has broken down in our system, thinking that if you get this shot, then you're good, you're safe, that's it. You're, you're, you don't need to worry, right? And that's not the case. That's, that's not actually how it works um, because the shot um, is effective. And I, I have those in very harsh quotations um, for only a few of the strains, okay? And I mentioned that there's over a hundred so it's only effective for a few of the strains and it's only effective for, they say up to five years. But women who are getting this at, so women who are getting this at say uh, 11 years old, really girls, by the time they're sexually active, maybe they're 19, 20, 21, 23, whatever, is it actually doing anything? Is it still effective? Maybe, maybe not. So there's a lot of confusion and I would say you know, I talk to a lot of women at this point, probably in the thousands, and I ask this question a lot for my own knowledge. Did you end up getting the shot? If you, you know, if you're, if you're willing to share this with me and um, probably about 50% of women that I talked to did get it and they still did get HPV. Mm. So um, I would say um, also, <laughs> there's so much here. Oh my gosh, we can go forever. Yeah. But 
I've heard also from women that their doctor offers it when they find out they have HPV, which blows my mind. Um, of course, the woman has to do whatever she thinks is right for her body, but there is no way I would ever, 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 if my body was in a state where it wasn't able to deal with this certain virus well enough to the point that it was surfacing and it was manifesting as cervical dysplasia, no way would I ever tax my body further by putting more unknown constituents, ingredients into my body, things like heavy metals um, and different adjuvants that they put in there um, to elicit an immune response, your body's already dealing with it. And I know that this comes from a place where the doctor is offering something, right? Well, I'm just gonna offer this just in case, just in case it works. That's the last thing your body needs when it's already trying to work so hard to clear this virus for you. I hope that's clear. <laughs> yeah. And it's so interesting that they like, instead of offering, you know, something that like, we are offering this holistic route, like, hey, instead of taking the this uh, vaccination, vaccination, how would you work on your health? And how would you work on your nutrition? And what your mind and hear these holistic routes and and it's interesting like i know we're focusing a lot on this like womb um the womb and the hpv but it's also i feel like what's going on in, in the world right now with this coronavirus and this virus it's like hey just get the vaccine and we'll give you a crispy cream donut and that just blew my mind when i like i mean i live in a different world where most of the people around me like we're all focused on our, our health and our healing and and through nutrition and taking our mushroom other um, herbs that we feel like are going to boost our immune system this very preventative route um, but instead of like hey just take this vaccine and we'll give you a donut and that just for me blows my mind so I'm like hey what about focusing on on building our immune system up and and um, improving our um, preventative health and versus just like here's the quick fix if it is, is even a quick fix uh, right. but I, I don't want to go too much in that because that's a yeah. <laughs> That's a whole nother live. But yeah. yeah, I totally exactly. agree with you. And, um, you know, I, I wholeheartedly agree that the education needs to come. How do we fortify? How do we get that immune intelligence back? Right? Because our bodies are, are made, created, whatever you want to call it, designed perfectly. We are not born lacking any system. And but our body does need certain things to be optimal, right? To um, having things like medicinal mushrooms and whole foods, like nutrients, nutrient dense foods to um, create the, the cells and the, the chemical messengers that our cells need to communicate to create these certain specific immune responses in our body. It's not gonna do that. It's like trying to build a luxury home with chopsticks versus like, bricks and two by fours and the really meaty like you know not necessarily meat but like I know you know, the good stuff the nutrient dense things <laughs> that our body wants and needs and that's really what um you know why i love medicinal mushrooms so much because it's it is a supplement it's supposed supposed to be supplemental to a holistically healthy lifestyle mm -hmm. i get questions all the time from people every day just got one yesterday that was like hey, I'm dealing with severe depression and anxiety, which mushroom will help with that? And I can't in good faith just say, oh, you know, take some reishi, some lion's mane, cordyceps, and maybe go into a trial for psilocybin and you'll be good or, or like, there you go. Here's my discount code, right? <laughs> no, it's like, well, what is your diet like? What is your activity level like? What's your relationships look like? Are you getting in like sunshine? Are you moving your body? Or are you sitting on the couch watching Netflix all day eating Oreos and chips? Mm -hmm. um, I can't just give people mushroom recommendations if I don't know what else is going on in their life. Like, are you stacking the deck in your complete favor? Whether it's Lyme, mold, autoimmune disease, cancer, HPV, or any disease, like are we doing the best we can for our bodies? Mm -hmm. mm, yeah, I resonate so much with that. And I just 
want to like slowly start to wrap things up and like also ask you what is your your morning routine like and what are your favorite mushrooms that you like to add into like your rituals um yeah yeah um so my morning routine is absolutely sacred to me i plan about an hour in the morning get up around 5 30 and i immediately have my reishi spore coffee if anyone goes to my page you'll see a bunch of you know posts and information about king coffee and that is the reishi spore coffee it's um it's the spores that are cracked in a very specific way and then that's combined with organic coffee um, I love the, the ritual of coffee. Um, I gave it up for a time because my, my gut wasn't handling the acidic um, nature of regular coffee. Um, and so, but then I found King Coffee and I'm just, I'm obsessed. I feel amazing with it. And so I usually am adding in um, a little uh, a third of a scoop of um, like Organifi gold or chocolate gold to give it like a little bit of a flavor, um, more, more of like a mocha flavor. And that has reishi and turkey tail in it. And then I'm usually adding, depending on what I'm doing that day, if I have a podcast interview or if I'm doing an IG live with Fungi Academy, then I usually will add in lion's mane. If I have a heavy lift that day, then I will usually add in a gram of cordyceps. Um, if I'm feeling sort of anxiety about anything, um, I will add in more reishi or um, more HCC. Uh, so I putting different combinations of mushrooms into this coffee. And then uh, of course my mineralized water, I sit down and I read for about 30 to 40 minutes. Um, and it, it's usually kind of like, a, uh, it's, it's usually a book that's centered around um, some sort of spirituality. That's, that's just where I like my head to be in the morning. Um, right now I'm reading a book called Reconnecting to the Source by Urban Laszlo. It's completely blowing my mind. And it's one of those books where you have to read, I have to read every paragraph twice <laughs> and take it really slow. But that's really what I want. I want to put that in front of my face first thing. Um, and then I do some level, some amount of journaling, whether it be just writing down different thoughts from my book, or maybe I go into a gratitude practice um, and talk about you know what I need to do that day and why today is going to be a great day and I decide I decide before I even get into my day that it's going to be an incredible day because boop 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 mm -hmm. and then that um, I usually have you know 528 hertz on or some some singing bowls or something like that in the background so you know very dim lights and so I take my my morning um, uh, very seriously. And it's, it's like a spiritual kind of ceremony practice for me. And then um, I usually get into some sort of, you know, body movement, yoga, um, usually in front of our juve red light to get that mitochondrial support. Um, and then I'm, I'm really set up for my day. Well, I'm, I'm in a calm state. And um, I feel really, really good. And I've been doing that for about three years now. And man, the days where something comes up and I can't do that, I just feel off the entire day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So beautiful and such a nice reminder for myself to also back into like, yeah, that morning routine. And even though like I spoke with um, Laura Dawn uh, a couple, like maybe a month ago with Jasper and she was sharing with me also just reminding yourself that every day doesn't have to be the exact same, same routine. It can be, it can be different based on um, how you're feeling when you wake up and also for women, like what part of our, our cycle we're going through, you know, some days we have a lot more energy, we're ovulating, we're fiery, like we want, maybe want to work out and other days we're like in deep goddess state, we're like, yeah like and need to like slow things down and maybe it's just reading a book and you don't add the higher activities and and honoring that as well as part of my routine but also just like being mindful throughout the month like, you know how can I add something a little bit more to improve my day and um yeah get me get me going in a positive way not just for my physical body but also for my mind mm -hmm. um, yeah and I just saw a comment here as well I just wanted to touch on is like um someone said let's see this like please seek a doctor if you have any serious chronic problems and i just want to like iterate that yes like we're not telling anyone not to go to a doctor and just 
follow this like regimen because this is the exact way to heal. And I think it's, yeah, very important to see a doctor and to get tested and check on, um, yeah, whatever illnesses are showing up in the body, but also approach it with a holistic, um, yeah. Yeah. So we're yeah all- I, I put that disclaimer out there in all of my things, my, my podcasts, my courses, all of my, it's yes, I'm not a doctor. Listen to your doctor, certainly. But there I've spoken to enough women now that I know that there is a lack of education. Um, and so not only finding a doctor that will listen to you, right, and not shove you off, but also finding your, your own resources and taking ownership yourself, because yes, a doctor can diagnose you, but a doctor is not going to heal you. You heal you. So there's a part of it where you have to take ownership of your own health outcomes, and that includes finding maybe other sources of information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that comes back just to the holistic route. There can be information coming in from multiple people. It doesn't just have to be this one person that, you know, you say you trust. And there's so many people, so much out there that can provide you so much, so much. And yeah, I just also wanted to come back and and maybe close this off with um, Multiverse uh, Marketplace. Uh, Tracy and Ali um, asked us, or, and we asked them, like, what is your spirit mushroom? And I would love to bring that back here as well in Fungi Academy. Um, so Mimi, what is your spirit mushroom? You know, I am going to have to say shiitake, um, not only because I have a soul connection with AHCC, it's woven into my being at this point, and AHCC comes from shiitake, um, but I think shiitake is, a, is a, a lesser known, you know, you hear about these sexy mushrooms like lion's mane and reishi the queen and cordyceps and, you know, I call it cordyceps. Um, <laughs> these are really like fun and like sexy, but shiitake, um, I think is one of the lesser known for its um, medicinal value, but also its um, value on um, an outward expression of of beauty. A lot of people way back for thousands of years have been using it for healthy hair, healthy nails, all of that. And um, I, I, I swear by it. So I would say shiitake for sure is my my spirit, my spirit mushroom. Oh, I love it. Um, Yeah. And if there's any, anything you want to share with the community before we tune out of here? um, I know you mentioned a course that you have, uh, your podcast, if you want to share that with us, just the names again, and where we can find you and how other women can come to your page, um, and where they can communicate with you about that. Yeah, absolutely. So first, just thank you for having me again. This was such a blast and I could talk to you for three more hours. <laughs> um, but my podcast, that's my best resource, really. It's kind of the holistic body, mind and relationships. Um, I host it with my partner, Chase. Um, I told a little bit of our story. So if you liked any of this content, there's much more. We just dropped our 69th episode. Um, So that's called the medicine podcast and it's medicine without an E on the end. So right away, you know, it's a completely different type of medicine. Um, So that's linked in my bio on my page. My Instagram page um, is Mimi underscore the medicine. And you can find most of my things in my link tree. It's got a, it's got a bunch there. And then if anyone is interested in my course or HCC, that's also in my link tree. Um, you can just go straight to my website. It's getmemefit.com and all of the things will be listed there. And um, one thing that's super exciting that we're bringing on um, actually this week is uh, we're bringing in a new kind of conglomeration of our favorite things. Most of them have mushrooms in them, um, but it's called the medicine cabinet. And it's these mm-hmm. tried and true vetted and researched favorite things, products, supplements, all of these things that add to our lifestyle that we've vetted and just love and want to share with everyone. So um, yeah, that's where all of those things you can find me, you can find me anywhere. And if you just need somewhere to vent, you can DM me any point, it might take me a few days to get back to you. But I promise I answer every single DM myself. Mm, Beautiful. And I'm also Said that you're sharing all the products that you guys use because I've been following you for a little while and I love everything that you're sharing. I found out about you, Mimi, through one of my friends, Jess, who is in San Diego, and she came to visit me and brought her Organifit and her HC. Um, 
Yeah, Organifi. Yeah, she brought her again. Yeah. Right. And I'm like, wow, this is amazing. How, like, where did you find this? And she's like, Mimi, go to Mimi. And I was like, this is like <laughs> the mushroom queen. I'm like, amazing. I found another fellow mushroom queen. And yes, I love it. I know, such a small world. Such a small world. And um, yeah, I'm so happy to be connected with you and to share more of our vulnerability with each other and how we can support the women of the community through holistic healing. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So good. Love it. Thank you so much for having me. It was so fun. Fun, Mimi. I'm going to tune out here with you guys. Bye.